This is a brief introduction to the software for Focal Plane Filter Array Engineering. This is a paper recently published in Optics Express. If you want details about the formalism and the mathematics behind the software, please see that paper. This is just briefly going over the uh, software that we also provided with the paper and how to use it. We use MATLAB. So once you download the software package, you can unzip it or copy it to a certain directory and then you run Filter Array Designer. This will bring up a GUI. Now this software is still in the process of refinement, so it doesn't automatically generate our focal plane filter arrays, so I always click this button first. Let me briefly go over each item here. First we'll talk about the unit cell box here. The X size, that's the number of cells in the X direction of the unit cell, is given here. And it's initially set to 2. And then the unit cell size in the Y direction is given here, and it's also given by 2. So this is a 2 by 2 unit cell, sort of. This is a 2 by 2 unit cell equivalent to a Bayer filter or something similar to that. The number of filters defines how many different uh, types of filter elements you have. If it's polarization, you might have uh, S0, S1, S2, S3. If it's color, you could have a red filter, a green filter, a blue filter, etc. So it's initially set to 2, so something like just a red and green array or a blue and red array. M is the number of unit cells that are tiled in the X direction, and N is the number of unit cells that are tiled in the Y direction. So that this gives the um, how, how many unit cells you have over the focal plane array. Um, and this defines the sharpness of your delta-like functions in the Fourier domain. This X DSP and Y DSP, this is specifically, and I'll show you again in a minute, this is shows a specific unit cell so you can put in uh, a coordinate of your unit cell, and it will show you the channel structure that's generated from that specific unit cell. Let me go to the pixel shape function. This is used for when you oversample the filter array. So this is for when you have, for example, uh, some number of focal plane pixel elements that are greater than each filter array element. So under for example, under a red filter, you might have a 5x5 five five set of pixels that are sub, uh, super sampling that, that focal uh, plane array element. And so then you can use the shape, the transmission shape function, to do some things. And we're not going to talk about that today. In a future paper, we'll talk about that in more detail. So you, for, for now, we won't... Um, use this box. Over here we have in the Fourier domain the number of samples you want uh, in, in frequency. So we have C and the size, eta size, and then this is used together with the pixel shape function to expand your uh, domain. When you're, this is, so this is the pendant on your sampling frequency, and when your sampling frequency is 1, then we have the Nyquist square, and if your sampling frequency, for example, is 2, then your normalized frequency units will go from uh, minus 1 to 1 uh, in each axis. Over here we have generate filter rate input arrays, choose delta functions, Force filters positive, normalized filters equalize DC, export lattice to workspace, etc. We'll go over we each one of these in more detail in a minute. In this box, we have RGB color values so that you can show a filter array visually what it would look like. So you can set each specific filter that you've specified the number of here 
and you can set a certain RGB value to that filter. And then it'll be mixed in the proper ratios uh, for the color filter regeneration so that the human can see what it looks like. Here we have reconstruction um, elements of the GUI for to do image reconstruction. So we have an additive noise magnitude. So this is modeling a sensor with some ag additive noise uh, and the, the magnitude of the, it's Gaussian white noise at the moment, and the magnitude of that noise is a percentage of the mean number of photoelectrons per image. So if you put 0.1 here or 10%, and you get a mean for this 25,000, you get a mean of 2,500 photoelectrons. Um, that will be your additive gas and noise mean. And then you can also simulate shot noise or Poisson noise, which is of course dependent on the, um, and this correctly uh, simulate shot noise over the whole image for each pixel, dependent on the actual value of the photoelectrons per pixel. And then this is a synthetic data uh, resolution target that we can use. Um, if you want to change this in the code, you can. If, if you, this is not set, then it picks up um, a hyperspectral image set that you can download, uh, and the details for that are given in the paper. And then finally, optimized filters tries to optimize the Fourier domain channel filtering, the linear filtering, to minimize the mean squared error for a specific image set that, that you have to change the data file. For. Right, so let's begin. Oh, one thing I forgot. Display results will show you all the results in different figures, and display imaginary cell results displays the imaginary results of the channel spectrums. So initially, uh, let's just go over an example. So let's do a Bayer filter for first. I'm going to change this to 3, and it updates all the plot for you. You can tile this we're going to say it's 16 by 16. So that means it's a 2 by 2 unit cell, and there are 16 by 16 of those 2 by 2 unit cells. So the total number of pixels you would have is 32 by 32. And we're going to do a typical bare filter array. So usually, uh, it doesn't matter, you can set this to whatever you want. But we'll say this one is red, this one is green, and this one is blue. So if you remember, um, we can do some, the bare filters typically have green, two places on the unit cell. And then we'll have red and the blue. So this is the pass and then we can click this again and it will regenerate all of the uh, channel structure. So remember that the, the channel structure we're viewing is the physical irradiance channel structure that's given by this specific focal plane array. A 2x2 two two unit cell bear filter array with 16x16 16 16 unit cells over the focal plane. The first thing we want to look at is the channel structure that's available from a 2x2 two two unit cell. To do that, we look at available channels real part and available channels imaginary part. You can see the imaginary part is 0, and the real part has these four sets of channels that are available. Uh, notice that it might be a bit difficult to see, but we, there are these channels in the corners here. So the, the nine channels locations result from the unit cell structure itself. 
if we change the unit cell, then there will be a different set of channels available to use for focal, the focal plane in engineering. So if we go to 3 by 2 here, and you can see it changes the available channels. And we also get some mixed channels, which are mixed between real and imaginary parts. Go back to the 2x2. Two two. So these are the available channels for a Bayer filter array. You can see they're just evenly spaced. There are nine available channel locations. And then there's different permutations for each unit cell. Uh, location. This corresponds to this unit cell location. This corresponds to this unit cell location. This corresponds to this unit cell location, etc. So now we've put in the bear filter values, the transmission, these are the transmission values of the focal planar filter themselves. And now we can look at the the actual channel structures. For red, and red being located at this location, we have this channel structure. So at these channel locations, we have these channel values. For green, we have this channel structure. Notice that the channels are only in the corners of the Nyquist square. So green potentially has, by itself, if you didn't mix the channels together, you would have higher potential bandwidth because it's further away from the DC baseband channel. And for green, I mean for blue, we have this channel structure. Now just to be clear, in the real system, these channels are all added together. So at this lower left channel location, you'll have this amount of red plus this amount of green plus this amount of blue, all mixed together at that channel location. And then the red, green, and blue data would be convolved with the delta functions that are here at this channel. So then you would get the real data centered at this channel location. And we can see the bear so if we set this here, I'm going to set the first one to red, second one to green. These values must be between 0 and 255. <clears throat> That's all a typical monitor can display. And then we can click on Create Color Array, and it will show us the typical Bayer Array mask there. Just for color filter array unit cells, due to the complication of physically calculating the types of unit cells for polarization arrays, we have not yet implemented an analog to this color unit cell generator. And with no noise, we can generate a set of test images. This data set is used from a set that we obtained from a group in Spain online. And you'll notice that we, uh, we'll talk about this in more detail later, however, that there's uh, a number of pixels, and if we specify that we actually want a bigger sensor array, it just extends it 
or it will crop it down. There is no rescaling of the up edge in this software. Let's go back to looking at some of the different uh, options in the software. We can save and load configuration files so that this configuration shown in the GUI, including the number of filter elements, and unit cell sizes, etc., is all saved and then we can reload it. The Next um, thing we're going to look at is the choose delta functions. Function. So let's go to a 3x2 or a 2x3 array. And let's look at the available channels. So here we can see that there's channel locations here. And we can look at one of these channel locations in a bigger graph by choosing this. So I've, we've already set the X, the unit cell to display as 1, 1, that's this one here. And then we can look at this figure and it will show us we can look at this figure and it will show us the channels for the one one element of the unit cell. You can see we have channel locations. Uh, there are nine channels, similar to the by two unit cell. However, they're now located at one third instead of right at the Nyquist boundary. Now, so, so suppose that for three channels, we want to make the bandwidth maximum in some way. What we can do is we say we would like to choose the size of the unit cell, 2 by 3, and we want to only use these channels here. So these <coughs> These four channel locations plus the baseband channel give us the ability to reconstruct three channels of information because we have half of the channel at the Nyquist boundary. So that gives us one full channel at the Nyquist boundary. And then we have the other half over here. So that gives us two full channels. And then we have the DC channel. So we have three full channels that can be used to multiplex information into. So we'll do that here. We're going to choose depth functions. This array is the same. It, it, it's a discrete matrix, but it corresponds to the channel locations here. So this value in this location corresponds to this channel location. So for filter 1, we want to put some value on that channel. Now, because we have a real valued system, we have to enforce hermeticity conditions. So we can put 1, 
one, 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 one. And then we click on generate filter. And what this does is it uses a pseudo inverse calculation to best fit the, the, the space domain filter values to what you want the channels to be. So you can click on that and you see that it made this uh, specific filter values for our red filter. Now we can click on filter 2. And then this is our green filter. Let's just change these to minus 1. And click generate filter. You can see it's these filter values. Now there is negative, which is not possible, so I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. And finally, look at our available channels. So here in the imaginary part, we can have um, these be imaginary. So let's try for well, the third channel having those be purely imaginary. And you can see that it's these are the same and these are so we can play that. So we'll just put minus i. You can put i in this, and it will change to imaginary values. And we have plus i. And this is because of hermeticity, uh, reflected about the origin of the uh, anti-symmetry for the imaginary values. And we can click generate filter. So here are our three filters. First thing we have to do is force the filters positive. Now it's physically realizable. Then we can equalize the DC channel between all three filter types. What this does is just in the Fourier domain, it scales the filter, uh, the filters so that the baseband channel has an equal amount of red, green, and blue. And there are our final values for the filters. Finally, we can compute the condition number of the unmixing matrix in the Fourier domain. This CN is the normal two norm condition number, it's 2.2. Um, I'm not going to talk about equal weighted variance in detail here. You can look up some of our prior papers or uh, you can look at some of Dereniak's original papers on equally weighted variance. It's used uh, for computing the variance, and in a, in a, in it has a, a physical meaning for uh, polarimetric imaging systems. And here is the Frobenius norm condition number, which is basically a generalization of the equally weighted variance. And then the rank. So we do have a rank 3 system, which means we can fully reconstruct all three color channels. And if we want to see what it actually looks like, we can create, create color filter array, and there you go. Mm, we must not have a color channel set correctly. Let's go with these. Red, green, blue. Blue was not set. So let's try again. There we go. So this is what a 3x2 uh, filter would look like to a human. Um, now these are mixed, so this is a panchromatic filter. We have a different ratio of, of filtering on each pixel. So this would require the manufacture of a tri-band filter at each pixel.
to accomplish. Now, some companies like Pixel Text are actually making this text of focus today. You can specify dual band and tri band filters on a filter array mosaic um, from Pixel Text. It's not extremely cheap, but it can be done. So, this gives us our example. Now, we can look at our channel structure and make sure that it's what we wanted. So we wanted all of these to be equal value, but you see that the sideband channels have a lower magnitude than the center channel. This is typically the case. For, this is for red, for green. We get what we want. We have some DC components, and then the side bend are negative. And filter three, we get some DC components, and then we get a purely imaginary uh, set of channels. So this channel structure here allows for a greater bandwidth of your chrome of your luminance channel um, if your chrominance channels have less information in them. And this is shown in the paper with some other systems. But the general framework you can design given a set of uh, unit cells values that you would like to reconstruct or given a known uh, bandwidth of your data, you can construct a color filter array which will uh, best have those bandwidth limits in mind. Um, let's talk about, so we've already shown this force filter is positive. It just takes any negative values in here and adds them so that they go to zero, and then this that enforces the irradiance, the positive irradiance constraint. Normalized filters just takes each filter and scales it so that the largest value is one. Equalized DC equalizes the baseband channel among all the filters that you have. Export lattice to workspace. Let's see what this does. So we click on it. Let's go to the workspace. So we have these L and LFs and these LTs and LT inverses. The lattice is given by this L matrix. So this is all of the possible values. of the channel structure itself. The ordering is from the lower left hand corner counting to the right row by row. So the, the, the baseband channel will always be the center column. So this is for each unit cell. We have each unit cell element, so we have six of them because it's a two by three. And then the channels are in each column. So we have one, 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 one. That is the this channel structure for the first element in the lower left hand corner of the unit cell. So this matrix describes the available channel structures. Uh, 
uh, really show you what to compute CN does. It gives you the condition numbers, create color filter array. Let's just see what the, the color filter array would look like to a human. Note that the colors are mixed here, so for this lower left filter, we have two thirds red, zero green, and zero point two eight blue. Generate FPA filter masks. This button brings up a dialog. It's used for the reconstruction. So the, this creates a mask of filter array elements. You have the number of unit cells in the X direction, and you have the number of unit cells in the Y direction that you want, and then you have the number of pixels in the X and Y directions. So this is simulating some focal plane array of a specific size with a specific number of unit cells on it. Um, in our paper, we used this number a lot because it's divisible by uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Um, so you can use the same base number pixels with different types of focal plane filter arrays on top of it. Array 2 by 3, we need uh, so 840, and then we need this to be 560, I believe, is uh, 1680 divided by 3. And then what this will do, it will generate, it will generate a filter array mask using these unit cell definitions. So that's done. And then once you uh, do that, you can use this generate filter test images to test your system. But first, I'll go over the set the channel filter parameters. So this is not to say these. This filter is talking about filters in the frequency domain, not the color filters or the polarization filters. Uh, you can see here, so it shows you the data. We're using a plank taper filter. If you want to change it, you can add something in here. So this uses their specified channel structure locations. Remember, we specified baseband and then these channels. And then we can filter out these channels to reduce crosstalk. Um, filter the Fourier domain filter optimization, or some nonlinear reconstruction technique that filters these in a nonlinear way, is beyond the scope of this paper. So we'll just show you a bit of, of this here. So you can control uh, first. You select your function. It always counts from the lower left and then goes row by row, so it's one, two, three, four, five. We can go to one and we can change the epsilon, uh, the, point, the cross section of the point paper shown here. And then the time domain uh, point response function of this filter is shown here. So we can, we can change it. Change the radius. Gotcha. It starts to overlap. So let's um, change this to something small. This is all in normalized coordinates, so this is the micro square. We can change our uh, 
transition value to be a little bit smoother here with this epsilon parameter. Try point one. Now I can set all filters to current values. This makes it faster to set some of the sideband if they're all the same. Then I just want to set this center prominence channel to be larger. So let me set that radius up all the way to 0.5. There we go, and maybe I can change this all the way to zero. So now we've got the maximum available bandwidth in the prominence channel, given you're taking a circular filter sidebands and then we set filter parameters with this. This will set the filter parameter. How the reconstruction is accomplished is we take the data of the image using the red, blue, and blue truth components or if you have different color bands that so, uh, whichever filter array color band or polarization band components you have, we take that through the filter uh, array onto the sensor. We apply any noise, so if you have Poisson or uh, Gaussian, added Gaussian noise, we apply that. Then we take it into the Fourier domain. We apply these filters. And then we unmix the channels by um, we compute the the contribution at each channel location. We use that matrix to unmix the channels and then recenter them all to zero. And then we take the inverse Fourier transform to get the actual images back. So we set the filter parameters. Let's close this. Uh, we won't simulate any shot noise. We won't simulate any noise. And then we can simulate test filter images. The code will give you each color band reconstructed. You can provide your own data if you'd like. Just look at uh, the hyperspectral data. So here we can see a reconstructed image. And you get your mean squared error. And then here is the DC or luminous channel of three types. If you have any questions about the use of this software or like more clarification, please email me and I will be happy to provide you with more information about the focal plane filter array engineering software and how you can use it to design filter arrays which will maximize your reconstruction bandwidth.